Greetings, family. Welcome to another Vlogmas. Today is Vlogmas 16, day 16. And I thought what I would do today is I would talk about something. Um, so a lot of people call me a pitch queen because I want a lot of money pitching. Um, and I'm sorry, y'all, I got to move this camera just a slight little bit. Hope it's not too annoying. I don't know why it's not really balancing better. Okay, anyways, we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> anyways, so today what I thought I'd talk about is non-dilutive funding. So, like I said, people consider me a pitch queen because I've won several. Not that, really not that many. I can count on one hand the number of times I've won. I have pitched at least over 100 times and probably won uh, five times. And um, but, but I think because some of the events that I've pitched for got a lot of kind of uh, publicity. And so, therefore, that's what people know. Um, and so... Um, Okay, I don't know why I'm playing with my hair while I'm doing my video, but forgive me. Anyways, so non-dilutive funding. What is non-dilutive funding? Non-dilutive funding is money that you can win in the form of a grant. Usually it's just a grant. Whether you pitch or not, it's really considered a grant. And therefore, you don't have to pay taxes on it. You can do whatever you want to with it. Um, and But, you know, usually you've won it because it's supposed to go towards your business. And so I tell people all the time that, you know, the best, you know, the best money is non-dilutive money because you ain't got to pay no taxes on it. You ain't got to do nothing with it. It's your money, your money you get to keep. Um, and which is nice because when you're not trying to worry about taxes and stuff like that, that's, that's a luxury. And so, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through a little bit about, um, uh, some of the things that I want. So Arizona State University, I'm part of the Adventures Devils program. And I, I, on double day, I pitched, um, on several different occasions. The first couple occasions, I never won anything. I think it was the third time that I ended up winning $10,000. And then I didn't pitch for a while. And then I recently pitched pitched again um, at a demo day and won $7,000. Okay, so there was that. Um, I would say, so then I've, I've gotten funding from being in different programs. So like the city of Tempe had a grant program where they gave, gave out funds to BIPOC micro manufacturing grants um so that we you know smaller micro manufacturing entrepreneurs get the funding that they need um for the businesses and so i did get twenty thousand dollars from them um i also rei I was part of rei's embark program so there's two programs with rei's embark and then there's navigate embark is really for early stage you can be in ideation you don't even have to have a product um i was well I was kind of well beyond ideation, but I wanted to be, I was, I didn't have the sales. So therefore I couldn't apply to navigate. Um, so I got part of Embark and part of that program is you get $10,000. Um, but for me, it was really important to get into REI Embark because for me, it was like proof of concept. Is this really a good outdoor product? Am I headed in the direct, right, right direction or do I need to be doing something else? Um, because at every turn, I was always willing to give up doing this because I felt like if this is not going to go or people are not going to really buy this or people think it's whack, I'm more than happy to <laughs> not keep beating my head up against the wall. So I got that money from them. I've been in a lot of some other programs like Local First Arizona. They have a program called We Rise for um, Black Entrepreneurs. I they did a match uh, grant of $1,000. Um, I was part of Positive Planets Accelerator, one of my favorite organizations. Um, and they provided, I think that was $1,000. I think it was 1000 Maybe it been $2,000. Um, and then what else happened? Oh, I'm part of a program um, in the state of Arizona called ARG community cultivators and they have a see me program and they infuse sixteen thousand dollars into the company i'm currently in that um, cohort right now so i think i've received half the funds and still possibly el eligible for the rest of the funds um as i continue to participate in the program um and so you know i've gotten from different places different sources um, funding, but also I've been a part of a lot of accelerators where you didn't necessarily get funding, but you got support. And so I feel like Target um, had a pro bono design um, program that really helped me with manufacturing. Um, and I'm trying to think, I feel like I've been a part of so many different things um, where I've gotten really great support and um, 
consultants and advisors to help me. Um, but what I wanted to say about non-dilutive funding is this. It's great. You don't have to pay taxes on it. However, I'm going to say this. I've gotten to the point now where I don't really apply so much for, anymore for non-dilutive capital. And the reason being is because while capital definitely can help the business, that's not what I need. I need help with more go-to-market strategy. I need help with marketing. I need help with understanding my manufacturing process, helping me develop an operations system so that I can hire a team. Um, I really, like I need, like I can get the non-dilutive capital and I've used non-dilutive capital for teams and staff and things always didn't go well. And I think it's because I just didn't have my ducks in a row. All the things I need to do in preparation of having a team and having having systems and understanding my business. Um, yeah. So I feel like now, you know, I really, I, I feel like I need to go back to the drawing board. I need to start all over again almost. And because I need like, for instance, this summer, I got to work with a consultant who helped me with creating a, um, a, a kind of book that explains conscious gear, that lays out what the company is about. Um, it's, a man, it's an employee handbook, onboarding manual, that's what it is. And I'm so excited about that because I feel like when people come to the company, I want them to understand what it is. They're, who, this is just not just some fly by night company, but this is a real company. I also like that we worked on standard operating procedures around certain things. Like when I sent out my Vesta pack, oh my God. Um, yes, we do some co manufacturing with Asia, but there's so many different things that happen in here in our company with the vest. There, there are additions that I make, there's a ways in which I do, um, I make certain changes because I want it to be. Um, I want it to be at the highest quality possible and I want to make it, make sure that it's easier for people to use. So yeah. Mm. So yeah, I've, like been putting it and then also just how to pack it up, how to make sure that it has all the information that it needs when it goes out, making sure that it it's folded a certain way because you do have the water bladder and the vest. And so it's just like a lot of different things. And so I'm realizing like, wow, um, you know, running a business is just not about making something and then send it out to your friends or selling it on the street. Like it's really about thinking about all these different systems because what if I'm gone or something happens to me, people would need to know how to do the work when I'm not there. And I want people to know how to do this work when I'm not there. So I don't have to be there. Right. The, the goal is not for me to be sitting around doing this for the rest of my life. Um, but also to get help. Right. You know, and as a black woman, sometimes I struggle to ask for help. So, I did this really, really talk about non-dilutive capital as, you know, I think the best thing I could have done with the non-dilutive capital is to do research and development, to really play, to iterate. Um, you know, if you come into uh, my office, you will see the whole row of vests <laughs> that I made from the wackity whack one to the current model. And so, um, because that's some money that a lot of times, you know, entrepreneurs don't have. We we figured out or we, you know, of course we always pay for that kind of stuff. And I did, I paid for a lot of it in the beginning, but then when I started to win some money, um, I was able to spend some of that money on that as well. Um, I also think that non-dilutive capital for me can be a scary thing because I feel like these people are giving me this money. It's important for me to do something well with it. I want them to be proud. And so it took me a minute sometimes to even spend my money because I wanted to make sure that I did the right thing. Like it was okay for me to mess my own money up, but I felt like I didn't have permission to mess up other people's money. And what I have loved is that everybody that's given me a single dime as it relates to my business have always said to me, you should spend the money on what you think is best for the company at the time. That it may not work out and that's okay too, but that's the reason why you get these monies so that you can experiment. So you can um, maybe fail, but then be able to get back up again and for you to understand and grow because this is the only time you're going to be able to get this kind of money. <laughs> because after a while, you're not going to be able to get this kind of money um, to do these kind of things. And so really trying to just being okay with, okay, you know, trying some things and um, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't work. And because I always felt like, 
also probably had a scarcity mindset too. Like, oh, I got this money. I'm never going to get any more money. What am I going to do? Um, and then also I think I had, you know, a mindset of wanting to be responsible, being a good steward of the money. And so, but I will say this, this whole video is really about what I'm about to say right now is that money is only part of the answer. <laughs> It's so only a part of the answer. And I think for me, like, I just would run up against a lot of different challenges and I would try to reach out to all my mentors and advisors. And there were there have been multiple times when I've had a challenge that none of them could really help me with. And sometimes they refer me to other people and then they couldn't even help me with it. And so I, you know, what I'm really struggling with right now, it's like, yeah, I can continue to apply for more non-dilutive capital and I probably will get it. But at some point in time, I've got to figure out how to bring on the kind of help that I specifically need as it relates to run my business. And I get the feeling that it's not no one person. It's not no two persons. I think that it is a team of people that we start to figure things out. That if, if there's anything I'm going to do with any non-dilutive capital, and I probably, when I think about applying for more non-dilutive capital, I will take this in consideration, is that really for team. I need a team. Like, I need people to come. I, you know what I mean? And I need people that I pay them a good salary. They come on board, they do their thing, right? And me, for me to just be be in the midst of all that um, because I can have all the money in the world. It's still not going to propel my business forward if I don't know how to do marketing, if I don't know how to successfully create a customer journey um, that people feel compelled enough to share with other people so that other customers will come. You know what I mean? So I'm really in this space of like, I'm appreciative of all the non dilute capital that I've, I've, I've been given. Thank you guys so much for all your generous support of me and my brand. But it's time in for really creating the nuts and bolts and infrastructure of a business. You know, the onboarding manual, the standard operating procedures, the employee handbook, the everything. I mean, and really bringing in the, and somebody to help me um, go through all these emails. <laughs> it's time. I think one of the things, I think this is what I want to say. For all the people out there that are like, want to help entrepreneurs, thank you for the money. Don't get me wrong. Thank you for the money. However, I really would like some programs that give like tangible help to get something done. Like Target's Pro Bono. They had 12 week period of time and I had to, I, we had a task. The task was to identify a manufacturer to produce dust pack. And guess what? Within 12 weeks, we figured that out. That team of people were assigned to me their time was assigned to me and to help me do this. And it happened. I'm going to tell you, if there's any, if there's anything that I need is I need, I need 12 week projects. I need people to come in and say, look, for 12 weeks, I'm working with you, Charlotte, and we're going to help you do this. We're going to help you with the go to market strategy. We're going to come in 12 weeks and we're going to help you do your marketing. We're going to, you know, like I, I need that now. I need that. I'm not saying I don't need the money, but I, I'm saying that if I get that, infrastructure support help, then we'll make the money because the vest will sell. But if I'm struggling to sell the vest because I can't get to these things that need to get, that I need to get to in order to successfully sell the vest, then I'm just like, I can go apply for another five, ten thousand dollars 10000 25000 win, whatever. But then I'm like, okay, I got this money. Now what? You know? Um, so really helping. I just really, yeah, I think I want, I loved the 12 week project. Mm -hmm. I think that was three months is a good amount of time. You can get something done. And, um, it taught me with support and help. And like, even when I left that experience, I left the experience understanding how to talk to manufacturers, what kind of questions to ask ways to engage with them. Um, language, um, everything. So like, it wasn't just that I was able to identify a manufacturer, but how to do, uh, how to work with manufacturers, um, and then honestly, like that was wonderful. Oh my God, that was worth a million dollars. There's another level, another level to working with manufacturers. 
that now I really wish I could have some more training and support on. So I say all that to say that not to lose capital is great, but maybe what I think what I need as an entrepreneur is more tactical project help that we actually get something accomplished over a amount of time. Because I get in these programs and you're in them from 10 to 12 weeks, but you I mean, yeah, you're learning all this stuff, but you're not really, I don't feel like the end, I, I, at the end, you're just more knowledgeable. But have you really completed an actual task that you can say, oh, wow, now, you know, I got my go to market strategy or wow, um, I got my content calendar for the next three months in terms of what we're gonna do for marketing, you know, like, tangible stuff. So I guess I'm just venting today. <laughs> but thank you for joining me. And um, don't get me wrong. I love non-dilutive capital. I will probably pause on applying for non-dilutive capital unless I feel like it's specifically for me. And I feel like it's specifically going to come with the kind of mentorship and support that I need right now. And so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll tell you how it goes. Um, because I just think money is not always the answer to everything. Have a most beautiful day, family. You know, as always, I love you. Take good care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace and a whole bunch of love.